Hey guys, it's Carl, and in front of me we have the quote unquote displays offered by Apple right now. A lot of you wanna know which one is worth getting. And although the two at the back here, the new studio display, which I've been using for the past couple days, and of course the Pro Display XDR, which is the most expensive, it's Apple's flagship display, which is ridiculously expensive with the cheese grater back. I'm also including the 24 inch iMac. Not a lot of people on social have been talking about this one because it's technically a display, but you also get a computer inside, which I think offers some awesome value. And uh, we'll start off with the newest one first, which is the studio display. I think a lot of hype is around this. Obviously it's the newest. So um, let's get this one on deck. So we will start off first with the pricing and which models that you can get. There's a couple different options. So it does start at $50.99 US or just under 2000 bucks Canadian. That is for standard glass. You can opt to get it with the nano texture, which is the matte glass, which I have. And in all honesty, my Pro Display XDR is in the glossy. I personally prefer a matte display, especially because I have this giant window here. So I think it's very situational. I do think a glossy display, the colors are more vibrant. It looks brighter or better to the eye, but depending on your workstation, depending on your personal preference, I think this one uh, is really up to you if you prefer matte, if you prefer glossy. I know people kind of swear by their options, but it's nice that you have the two choices to select from, unlike say on the iMac where you only have the glossy option. So second off is the stand option. So it does come with this tilt stand included, that's the base option. You can also get the one with the riser with that extra piece of aluminum, which we'll see on the Pro Display XDR. That will cost you an extra $400, which is pretty ridiculous for that little piece of aluminum to give the monitor some extra height. So if you want to save some money, you can always put it on a monitor riser. I've got a couple wood ones, which I'll leave listed below, but if you wanna be super budget, which if you're buying this monitor, that doesn't really make sense. You can always stick it on some stacks of paper like we used to do in the office. For the rest of the design though, very typical Apple. It only comes in the one color option of silver and it is perfection in terms of industrial design. The aluminum, the trim on it, the finishing, very, very typical Apple. There is no company that comes close to building things this beautiful. Would I rather say four to $500 for a cheaper budget option with a plastic back? Absolutely, we'll never see that from Apple. I think design, philosophy, beauty, and price, of course, are three words that go really well together with Apple. You won't buy a better looking monitor unless subjectively, I guess, you look at the Pro Display XDR, which costs even ridiculous more amounts of money, but they do take minimalism, I think, to the extreme, especially for the IO ports, especially for what you're paying for 1600 bucks. You've just got the three USB-C ports and the one Thunderbolt 4 port to plug into your main device, whether that's the new Mac Studio, whether that's a MacBook, MacBook Pro or Mac Mini, whichever one you want to plug into. And in terms of IO, that is sadly it. That's all that you get for some ports. We of course have that power adapter with a braided cable, which is kind of stuck. Maybe it's not, I just, don't wanna pull on this too hard. It seems to be soldered in there, so uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. You do have the cooling fans up top, and while running this device with a Mac Studio, you can actually feel some of those cooling vents go off. I wouldn't say that it's loud, you can't hear it, but there is definitely some airflow. We've got six speakers, spatial audio, and the audio output on this, as with most Apple products, they're usually industry leading, so you can get by without getting any external monitors or I guess external speakers. You wouldn't wanna connect this to an external Bluetooth monitor, for example. We have a 12 megapixel camera up top. That is their new front facing camera with of course center stage that gives you 122 degrees of view. So really useful for FaceTime calls with multiple people, Zoom or team meetings, as that is still the thing. And we will actually plug this in. I'll hook this up to my MacBook Pro just to make it a bit easier. And the nice thing here, it is just the one cable with a laptop. You can still plug in your Mac mini or the new Mac studio that just requires some extra cable. So it just makes it a bit easier for this vid. 27 inches, 5K display. So that is 14.7 million pixels, 600 nits of brightness. So not as bright as the Pro Display XDR, obviously not as big, which we'll get to in a second. And I would say for most 90, 95% of people, 27 inches is the sweet spot, unless you really need that extra screen real estate, unless you are playing with massive timelines, unless you really want to blow up an image, 27 inches is perfect. 
And there's really nothing else to say about the display quality on this. Every sort of content that you throw on this, whether you are just someone watching a YouTube video, whether you are watching HDR, 4K, maybe even 8K content, if you're editing high-end video footage, stuff looks great. But if I were to be a bit nitpicky when I initially saw some of the leaks and renders for this, it was reported we were going to get a higher refresh rate display, something like ProMotion, something in the 120 hertz range. It's still capped at 60, so if you're playing any high-end games, maybe can't associate that word with Mac, but um, you are limited. A lot of people will argue you can grab an LG Ultrafine monitor promoted by Apple themselves for a couple hundred dollars less, but of course it doesn't have the Apple name, it doesn't have the Apple build. I think this monitor is great if you already have an existing Mac Mini, if you already have existing peripherals, if you have, say, a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air that you want to plug in and you don't want to spend the money for a Pro Display XDR, I think it's a solid option. Remember though, all you get is the monitor. This doesn't work on its own. It doesn't have a dedicated operating system. Even though we have an A13 Bionic inside, if someone could run a hack on this to run a custom version of iOS, I think that would be pretty badass. You could use it to mine crypto, something, uh, something ridiculous, but um, it doesn't work on its own. So you need an extra device, obviously, with every monitor you need that. If you end up grabbing the Mac Studio or Mac Mini, you still need to buy an extra keyboard, an extra mouse, a trackpad. I know most people have them, but if you don't, those are $199, $150, and $100 respectively. So the price adds up for those extra peripherals. Keep that in mind when we switch to the iMac, but before we get there, we'll quickly compare this to the Pro Display XDR, which is their flagship. So this monstrosity here, the Pro Display XDR, you can see larger, 32 inches. It has that, I'm gonna say iconic, the very well-known cheese grater back. That's the entire cooling system. Obviously it has a very similar build. Only can get it in silver. The machining on it is near perfection. Now I would almost say that this is a piece of art. Not that I would ever display this, but maybe in 20, 30 years when uh, this piece of tech is obsolete, I could um, have this on display somewhere in my hypothetical studio when I'm an old man. It looks pretty cool. I'm a fan of it. So the biggest differences here are obviously the price. This starts at an eye-watering $5,000 for the standard glass, which is what I have, or $6,599.9 for the nano texture. Something also which uh, drew a lot of buzz when they released this, this pro stand, $9.99, so $1,000 for this piece of aluminum. We thankfully have the option to tilt this and of course rise it, which I guess is nice, but even in the keynote, I think they mentioned this and moved on to the next section within two to three seconds. So I was actually there in, where was that keynote? That was in San Jose. That was my last WWDC that I went to in person. Uh, I think the entire theater, everyone on the internet kind of went crazy about it. The Pro Display XCR will be $49.99 for the display itself. And the nano texture version will be $59.99. The Visa Mount Adapter will be $199, and the Pro Stand, $999. And like the Mac Pro, they'll all be available in, this, in the fall. $1,000 for a stand. You also have a $200 option for a Visa Mount, but I'm assuming if you can afford a $5,000 monitor, you'll find a way to, to make it work. In terms of ports, we actually have the same. So three USB-C, the one Thunderbolt 4, the power connector, like I said, this one can actually remove. And that is it for IO. So even a couple years later, they are keeping it similar to the studio display. And switching this over, you can actually see here, you can see that in my studio display because of the nano texture. Look at all this glare and reflection from that big window, like I mentioned. Quickly gonna bring this over and you can see how much less reflection that we're getting from that window. And moving that over, you can kind of even see the softbox. It really is situational or I guess preference which texture that you get. And if we do, I mean, I will get some B-roll shots. I unfortunately nicked this Pro Display XDR. Look at that, you can even see my ring light off in the corner there. Thankfully, I didn't shatter this screen. That was a close call when I was moving this monitor around, but um, it served me well for the past couple years. I obviously do think it's overkill for what I do, but uh, thankfully I can create these videos and kind of justify it. 
And when plugged in, you can actually see how vibrant everything is. You can obviously see the extra screen real estate. So 32 inches, this does get brighter. Typically a thousand nits can actually peak up to 1600 nits. And the big thing for this monitor, why you would upgrade to this if you are working in high-end video work with HDR content. So here you get 1 million to one contrast ratios, 10 bit color, of course, P3 wide color gamut. And if I did forget to mention, this is a 6K panel. So even more pixels than the studio display, 218 PPI. And obviously I'm slightly biased, super blessed really to use this as my daily driver for a monitor, something that you typically associate with a smartphone. But this is really what I reference everything else against. On the glossy display, stuff does look more vibrant, but you can even tell just by by pivoting it off angle or off axis here, how much extra glare you get. Would I ever justify this as an actual purchase? No, I don't think so. I don't think it is worth $6,000, close to $7,500 Canadian, plus the extra $1,200 CAD for the stand or a thousand bucks US. I think this is honestly overpriced. Pro users that would use this to its full potential if you are grading HDR content for an actual production company, they'll probably be the ones paying for this monitor. You wouldn't have to shell out your, out of your own pocket. That's who I think this kind of monitor is for. Do I think it looks ultra badass and really looks great in my studio setup? Obviously, yeah, it looks straight up dope. So those are the two actual display options that Apple currently offers. My recommended one is to grab the studio display, but there's a big but. I'm gonna bring up the iMac. Lastly, so last off, I'm just gonna put this out there just so you guys have this in mind. 24 inch iMac, four and a half K display. You have a fully operational computer here for only $12.99. So very similar price to the studio display. And of course you have all of this inside. So it, you also have the option to get all these dope colorways. Obviously I've got mine in orange, but they've got blue. You can even keep it OG silver, just like all of the other stuff or displays that we've looked at. You also get accessories in the box. So you have a keyboard, you have a magic mouse, not the best, but it is what it is. You don't have to pay extra for that. And you get an M1 chip inside. It isn't the M1 Ultra, it isn't the M1 Pro, but for all the videos that I'm doing on this channel, I can do all of that stuff on this iMac. I can also do it on the Mac Studio on the M1 Ultra. Does it perform slightly better? Yes, but this is still such a capable device. I will leave my favorite spec. It's the mid-range, so you get access to some of the cooler colors. Just keep this in mind, guys. I'm not saying that you have to grab the iMac, but if you are someone that's kind of getting into the ecosystem or you're upgrading to a much newer device, as long as you don't need a laptop, if you're eyeing the Mac Studio, if you are eyeing even the Mac Mini, which is still under $1,000, where else can you get a display like this? This form factor, of course, designed by California and Apple, you know the saying here on the channel, um, don't sleep on the iMac. So those are technically the display options that you have. Let me know which one you guys are interested in getting. I think that pretty much covers off all the options that you can get right now in 2022 for Apple. Hope you guys enjoyed my long rant and I'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.